that summer I would find a way to be tutored in Yiddish. And my parents uh, talked to, first they talked to one of their friends, a woman who was from Winnipeg. There were a number of Jews from Winnipeg living in the Twin Cities, uh, and Winnipeg was much more of a Yiddish center than Minneapolis and St. Paul. And then my father came up with the idea, maybe his father would be the tutor. My grandfather. My grandfather was not a, a warm and cuddly fellow. He was not easy to get close to. I uh, never felt close to him in any personal way. He didn't have a very happy life. Maybe he was temperamentally unhappy. But he was an educator. That was what he did. And earlier in his life, one of the things he'd been doing is tutoring boys not of my generation, but of, the, of my father's generation, uh, for their bar mitzvah speeches, their drushes. And so some of, they had these kids in that generation had more passive knowledge of Yiddish than I did, but they needed some kind of formal training. And he was, that was one of the things he did. So uh, he, uh, he arranged with Brochen's bookstore, which was the Jewish bookstore in Minneapolis, to order a set of Der Unfanger by Yankov Levin. Uh, I don't know if you've seen these books. You might have. I'm sure the book center has many, many copies. Six volumes, starting with the first. And these are children's textbooks. They're not college Yiddish. I mean, I still had my copy of college Yiddish, and I could turn to it if I needed to. This was Perle und Semele, uh, uh, and there was one uh, uh, poem in there that was kind of like the house that Jack built, uh, or Chad Gadya, uh, where you, know, you go from verse to verse, building, building, and building. This was a children's book, and I, I was going through it day by day uh, with him over a period of six to eight weeks over the summer. And at the end of the summer, I don't know how, uh, but I was able to read Yiddish newspaper articles. And I think part of, I, I actually do owe to my Hebrew education the fact that I didn't have to worry about learning a new alphabet. I had that. And I didn't have to worry about a big chunk of Yiddish vocabulary, which I already knew. Uh, but I had to worry about a grammar and another part of the vocabulary that I didn't have. And that's what I was learning with my grandfather. His newspaper was the Morgan Freiheit. He was also a leftist, even though he was uh, kleikoidish, uh, that is to say he was a religious, uh, he worked in a shul, in a synagogue. Uh, but that was one of the contradictions of, my, of, of him and of my upbringing. Uh, and then that was the following summer, over the year, between that year, in my junior year of college, I was reading Yiddish on my own. Uh, I graduated to short stories and to a Yiddish novel. I read Stempenu in my junior year on my own by Shalom Aleichem. And then uh, I applied to the Zomer program. Uh, there were two... Uh, classes, class levels at that point in the Zomer program, beginners and intermediate. And I signed up for intermediate. And then when I showed up uh, in New York, I had self-doubts. And I met with uh, Professor Herzog, Marvin Michel Herzog, who uh, was overseeing the Zomer program. And I said, I, do I belong in intermediate? After all, I've never had a formal course I didn't grow up speaking the language. He said, if you wrote me a letter in Yiddish, you belong, which I did, you belong in intermediate Yiddish. And what amazed and delighted me in my first day in the class with Mordechai Schechter speaking full sentences in Yiddish is that I understood him. And I was able, in my way, in my still very stilted way, to, uh, to respond and to participate in the class uh, as a full participant and not as some, uh, as a, uh, as a stummer, 
somebody, you know, a mute witness or bystander. So, so what I my autodidactive work and my grandfather's training had actually uh, been successful. <laughs>